Hi guys, this is Dan Dupree with uh, Simple Parts Support. We're going to create this video here for you so you can either refresh your memory or learn how to process an order with Simple Parts System. Uh, feel free to share this with anyone in your parts department who may ever use the system uh, or anybody else you think uh, would, would want to know how to process an order. Most of you have probably already gone over this process during our uh, walkthrough and the first day your site went live, but we uh, feel free again to refresh yourself or, or share it with anyone who may need the info. So we'll go ahead and get started. As you can see, we are on the initial login screen. So as you know, how our system, will, how our system works is you will receive an email from our system letting you know that an, a customer has placed an order on your site. It's actually a copy of the same email that the customer receives on their end uh, when their order is placed and has been confirmed. So once you receive that email in your inbox, you will want to pull up the control panel where, and we have shared that URL with you and you're going to enter your username and password. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Sign in here very quickly. And once you're signed in, you will select your website in the top right-hand corner from the drop-downs to make sure that you're pulling from the correct website. And once you've done so here, you're going to click on Recent Orders, which is in the far left-hand side of the screen. looks like a shopping cart on the blue stripe there. So once we select Recent Orders, we're going to find our most recent order that that was submitted. I see a few here, but I've made a test order here and I'm looking for Dan Dupree, which is right there. So on this line you can see a bit of information on the recent order screen under order history. Far left side here we have our order number. That six digit code there is specific to this order and this order only. If uh, this same customer were to come back in a few days and place an order with you, they would be assigned a new order number. Just the same as your uh, POs and ROs work within your DMS system there at the dealership. We're also going to have date and time that the order was placed and last name and first name of the customer and then the status. As you can see here, I've selected to attempt to pay with PayPal and I have payments submitted. You can actually see on this page there's two different types of statuses with PayPal. We have payment confirmed and payment submitted. Payment confirmed means that your PayPal account has indeed received all of the funds for that order from the from your customer. Payment submitted means that you actually haven't received all of the money as of yet. But since we're doing a test order here, we're going to pretend that we have received all of our payments from this PayPal order. So you'll slide out to the right hand side here and you're going to select the link that says details. Once you've selected details, that's going to take you to the order details screen. As you can see here, I'm using one of our clients, uh, Autobarn Subaru of Countryside. And in this, in this screen here, we have quite a bit of information. And I'm going to go over the notification section first. So up here at the top, we have our notification section. This has quite a bit of information on this particular order. One of these, and most importantly, and is showing in red, is the fact that this payment has not yet been received and you should not process it until the payment is confirmed. Again, remember this per particular PayPal order says payment submitted, meaning we haven't actually got money for the payment yet. Now, going down here to the bottom in our fraud prevention section, you'll want to check out a few items here. You can see here that our my IP location is actually showing as being in the state of New York, but the billing address that I've entered in my order is from the state of Georgia. This happens a lot with uh, both cell phones and IP addresses that are registered incorrectly throughout the country and world. However, we want to show you where the IP address is in the uh, rare event that there is something uh, fraudulent going on. So we want to give you all that information up front, let you make the best decision about your order. You can also see that this particular customer, who is me, has seven fraudulent orders. So what this means is that in our system here, a user of Simple Parts System, whether it be uh, someone at your dealership or one of our other 100 plus dealerships across the US and Canada, something in this customer's information in this order, whether it be name, address, phone number, or uh, email address, is similar to a person who has ordered from one of our sites before, and that particular order was marked as fraud. Why that is? Well, let's check it out. Let's see exactly what about this order was similar before. So if you on the line that says have fraudulent orders, let's view the details and check that out. 
So as you can see, the similarities on this particular order to all these other orders, and these particularly these seven that were marked as fraudulent, are the phone number. The phone number I entered is the support phone number uh, where all of you guys contact us, and that is why our system tracked the fact that that phone number has been entered multiple times before, and in fact, seven of those cases have been marked as fraudulent. You can also see here at the top that I have actually have 216 canceled orders and seven shipped orders. Again, this all seems to have to do with my phone number, though in a couple of cases it has to do with IP address, email and phone address, uh, and one of them it's just IP address. So we are giving you all the information up here of, of how this customer has interacted with our system in the past. I want to make sure that you guys are making the best decisions going forward for fulfilling orders as well as having all the information at your fingertips so you can make the best decision for your dealership. So most orders that come in are not going to have any of this information up here at the top and the, the, what you're looking for is a statement that says no notifications to display which will show up in green. So hopefully that is what you see and we're going to go back to order details here and we're going to go really with our first step of processing the order. So step one of course, well second step we'll say. So step one was checking our notification sections. Step two we would suggest is always printing the order. So if you click the print order button over here on the right hand side, that's going to open up a separate print order window. As you can see on the screen there, I'm now ready to print this out. This is going to give me a paper copy of all of the information, pertinent information for the order. So I have the date and time, uh, the order number, and all the customer information that I would want to, sum to submit and enter into my DMS there in dealership to track that information. You may have a different process for your dealership, which is just fine. This is just our best practices and suggestion for what you do, but we would always suggest entering this customer's information into your DMS system. Once that is printed out, you will notice that if I head back to the order here and refresh the page, once I have printed that order one time, a green check mark is going to show up right here on the print order button. That's to let you know and any other uh, folks that are working in the system at your dealership that this order has been printed at least one time and it may not to be may not need to be printed again in order to uh, not have a duplicate order on hand uh, as far as paperwork goes. Again, how, however you got you want to do it within your dealership with your dealership's internal processes, that's entirely up to you. So now that we've printed our order, on that order page we can see what parts have been ordered by the customer as well as that information and we've checked our notification section. So the second, the third step is going to be to check and make sure that we have indeed received payment. In this particular case, this PayPal order, of course, we didn't receive payment. But if I go into the billing details section here for any order, this particular one says pay, PayPal payment submitted. And if I had actually paid for this item, you would see over here under the parts section, the shipping section and then the total and perhaps tax if they are in your home state, all of the totals of the amount collected from PayPal. We're always going to suggest that you check either your PayPal or your authorized.net account to make sure that payment is indeed there. Our system is fully integrated with authorized.net and partially integrated with PayPal. However, with, with anything when it comes to uh, fund collection and com confirming that you have indeed been paid, we always strongly suggest that you check both the authorized.net account and the PayPal accounts to ensure that you have indeed received payment for those orders. So in this case, we will say that we have indeed received an order and we have checked our PayPal account. Now we're ready to receive the order. So to receive the order, on the order details page right over here on the right hand side is the under order status is the receive order button. What receive order does is changes the status of the order to received. This is going to send a confirmation email to your customer which lets your customer know that someone is in, on the other end of the internet is has received their order, they have seen the fact that they have placed the order and they are processing the order. This is to let your customer know that uh, someone is communicating with them and indeed that someone is working on fulfilling their order. It doesn't, however, mean that the order necessar necessarily will be fulfilled or uh, that there may not be some sort of question that you need to ask the customer uh, along the lines of the item that they have ordered. 
This is just to keep those lines of communication open with your customer. You'll notice under the email correspondence section right here, under the envelope icon, we now have, if you scroll down a bit here, you can now see the email that you've sent out. These emails are auto-generated. Uh, we have set those up for you previously to your site going live. The text within the email is fully customizable, so anytime you may want to change, add, or subtract any text you see there, please let us know. Uh, but as you can see, this one right here says it's being received, my order's being received and processed. Please allow two to four working days for shipment of my order, et cetera, et cetera. So on your end internally, next steps, if you haven't already, is to enter the customer information into your DMS. And then, of course, check the availability of the part. Now, again, the print order page is going to have your part number listed. You can also find the, the part number from this uh for the part that was part or parts ordered by the client under the order contents page, the little box icon here. So as you can see in this particular one, we have a Subaru oil filter and our stock code is right over here on the left hand side. That stock code will coincide with everything you have in your DMS and we need to figure out where that part is. Perhaps you have some on hand, perhaps it needs to be ordered. Again, remember in our email correspondence, we've told the customer it takes two to four days to ship the item out. If two to four days in this case is well within the range of when the part is going to arrive if it is not on hand, you do not necessarily have to communicate with the customer. However, keep in mind customers uh, do like to have communication from you, so if you can give them an idea of when their part is expected to be on hand and will be shipped, we would always suggest doing that. You can in fact let them know those when their part will be available in the email correspondence section by sending them an email from this composed message box. You can write a message directly to the customer uh, and then send the email down here and you can send an email to the customer directly without having to go back and forth between our control panel here and your email client. Any response the customers have to any of these emails will go directly to your specified email that you gave us uh, when we set the site up. So really the last step here is to get the order shipped out. So we'll say in this case that that oil filter that was ordered, I, we have on hand, it's right there on the shelf, and we're ready to get it uh, get it on out, out the door to this customer. So once you have boxed up your this oil filter and you have chosen uh, the best way to ship uh, as far as uh, what quickest and uh, most efficient price-wise for you, we, we are going to go into the order details page here and select ship order, which is over on the right hand side. Now, once you've printed out your label, of course you have a receipt with that shipping label that has a tracking number on it. Make sure you have that handy when you go to ship the order. This could be the same day the order was received, it could be two days later. Keep that in mind. So, once we get to order details here, we'll click ship order and we'll see that our box has popped up here that is asking for shipment details. So the first thing I'm going to select is my shipping carrier. Commonly, of course, you're going to have UPS, FedEx, or United States Postal Service. So we'll check USPS in this case, and I will enter a tracking number here. Once I've entered my tracking number, I can then select ship order. Once I've selected that my order is shipped, you will see that the status has changed to shipped here. You'll also see under the order summary page, our shipping carrier is US Postal Service, our tracking number has been entered in for us, and the date that the item was shipped is also automatically uploaded. So today, August the 15th, 2014, at 1.20 p.m. Now, on the customer's end, if you check email correspondence, that customer has been sent an email letting them know that their order has been shipped. And at the bottom of every email that our system sends out, there's to check the status of your order at any time, please click here. So this click here button right here, we're going to go ahead and show you in this order, is kind of the customer's own version of the control panel, if you will. You can now see here the billing address that was entered, the shipping address that was entered, every email correspondence between you and the customer here at the bottom, and of course at the top most importantly our order details. I can now see that I have a tracking number filled in and if I were to click on this link it's going to take me directly to the US Postal Service's tracking tool on their website. So from start to finish you have now both you have received this order, you have verified that payment was confirmed and collected and you have now shipped the order out. You'll now notice on your recent order screen 
that this particular order is no longer there. As you can see under our names here, Dan Dupree is not there. So your order has been processed. That, guys, is from start to finish processing an order. There are a few caveats here and there with a few orders, but very simply, that's going to get you from start to finish with your order out the door. If you have any questions at any time, as you know, we can always be reached via email and by phone. Our email address is support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at simplepart.com, and our direct telephone number is area code 404-520-7640. Hope you guys have a great day, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.